I want to talk to you about your A1C numbers and about your story. Um, I got your email and I was really excited to to talk with you because it inspired me. So why don't you just start? Just tell me who you are and kind of your your story. Sure. So I um, have two kiddos and I have like a, no issues with gestational diabetes with my first. Um, but with my second, I did, which was very strange to me because I worked out, I ate what I thought was healthy, like I did all the things and I like, kept my weight really good. My OB is like, you need to gain weight. You're doing all the things too well. Mm. So then I had like the magic gestational diabetes test and I was at the Y in the women's locker room and I got a call from my OB's office and they said, yeah, so you have a meeting with an endocrinologist because your numbers were through the roof. And I was like, can I get a redo test? Like, is that a thing? They're like, no, your numbers were over 300. You don't get a redo. You get an appointment with the endocrinologist. So I was able to manage it um, just with diet and exercise. I'd had complications with my first pregnancy. So I actually delivered my second child at 37 weeks. And that's typically when people with stational diabetes have to turn to insulin. Um, So Mm. I avoided that disaster, which was good. And then I thought my numbers were fine and good um, until I had an appointment, I don't know, a couple years later three years it was a long time later and they're like hey your numbers are through the roof like you are almost type 2 diabetic mm. so um i was sent to my regular doctor and he's like okay here's your numbers like 6.2 so you need to start metformin and i'm like no like <laughs> I'm, mm. I'm not i'm not a medication person um my dad had type 2 diabetes and did not control it well mm. um but i saw what that did I'm like that is not going to be me so what are my options and so I decided at that point to look into diet, look into exercise. And I told my doctor, I said, give me three months. If my numbers aren't down in three months doing what I think I need to do, then we can chat again. But give me three months. And he's great. He's like, okay, do it. And I said, okay, I want an appointment with a nutritionist. Like, I'm going to do all the right things and do it. Um, so I met with the nutritionist. She's like, no one ever wants to meet with me at this point. And I'm like, well, I do because I, I don't want this to get worse. Mm. So I did what the nutritionist said was, correct which was high protein low carb mm. i'm like but you my carrots have carbs like mm. i could eat a whole bag of carrots and that's all my carbs for the day and mm. she's like no one ever gets diabetes from eating too many carrots i'm like you need to tell people this because <laughs> told me to count this and do this and it's what i'm doing so yeah. um i kind of made my own thing at that point and it worked and i got my numbers down but i didn't feel stellar like i would literally eat like half a chicken and then eat a piece of birthday cake. Well, like mm. this, like not a good plan, right? Mm. So um, I started thinking about other ways to manage it because my numbers started creeping up again. And I'm like, something is just not working right. And at that point, I had started grad school full time. Um, and I also have my husband and kids and my mom's in town. So busy, but like something has to change. And one of my mentors mentioned, she's like, hey, you know, I know you're talking about this and that, but I've really gone whole food plant-based and you might want to look into it. And I was like, oh, okay. So I looked into it and I thought I can never give up cheese and eggs, right? Like everyone says no cheese, no eggs, can't do it. That was me. Um, and then I did some more reading and I'm like, oh, this may be actually for me and a way to control what I need to control. And then um, the day I cut into a cadaver, January 17th of mm. 28. 18 I was like that looks like chicken I'm done um, like I literally like stopped that day so I switched whole food plant-based because you were in that school day. you were in were you in med school I was um well, sort of I so I got my degree in occupational therapy mm. and so with that we take anatomy with a cadaver lab okay um, so that would explain well, that the cadaver <laughs> that would explain, I'm not randomly cutting people open on the street I promise uh, so that would be why yes um and so I was like okay I'm gonna try this so I like stumbled across clean food dirty girl and I so I tried a lot of stuff from the blog at first and kind of my own stuff and I'm like I really feel fantastic when I eat like this mm. perhaps this is a solution mm. um really because my mentor too had you know talked with me more about how it affects Alzheimer's and how it can affect heart disease and all these other things so these are all in my mind and I'm like oh I wonder about you know, pre-diabetes and reversing numbers so 
um, that's when I realized it was actually working. So mm. I started eating this way. It is not perfect. Like I have my moments in my days where I don't some, eat something that I should not be eating um, and regret it significantly. My body's like, no, it's not the smartest choice you've ever made, Katie. Mm. Uh, let's not do that again. Um, but I, my energy is through the roof and my numbers are great. They're usually five, 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 six depending my doctor is thrilled and hasn't mentioned my foreman again so awesome so you yeah. never you well congratulations first of all that's it thank you amazing yeah and yeah, I mean it seemed like you were really looking for like you wanted to get to the root cause of whatever this was instead of just taking right. medication right that was right. Kind of absolutely like, that was it I want it. right I don't want to just cover it up with a band-aid like what is the actual problem and how can mm. I take charge to fix it that's really important to yeah. me yeah. Anyway, so, yes. Yeah. And that's, I think that that's where a lot of people have a disconnect because they don't think about that piece. Like they think, well, I can take some medication and I can treat it, right. but like treating it isn't the same as like getting in there and actually, you know, making improvements so that you don't have to treat it. Right. Right. Because I mean, I imagine like your doc, you, you talked with the nutritionist and they gave you a very, you know, classic textbook. Right. Diabetes diet information. Right. Did your doctor ever say anything to you about nutrition, about food? No, um, nothing. Um, so I actually went back to him. And even the last time when I went just to get a round of blood work for um, a job I have, I had to have a physical. So I went back and he's like, so what are you eating? Are you still doing what you're doing? I'm like, yeah, like, I'm still eating whole food, plant-based for the majority of my stuff. My numbers came back fantastic. He's like, well, just keep doing it. Maybe I'll start talking to my patients about it too, um, which was good to hear. And it's hard. And he told me it's hard because no one wants to hear that. They'd just rather have a pill. Yeah. He said, you're one of my few patients. When you call me, like, I know you are really sick or something is happening because you just, yeah, you never want a pill. You never want a quick <clears throat> fix. Yeah. Um, so you know, he talked about it too. And he's talked about it with some patients, but people just don't want to hear that yet. And they aren't mm -hmm. ready to hear that yet, which is understandable. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've heard that from a lot of other doctors too. Like yeah. if they were open to it, you know, that's one thing, but they, they really want to pill because they want to continue doing, you know, they want, they don't want to change and, right. and changing your diet for most people, it is really a significant big thing. You know, yes. and if and if you're not like motivated to do it, it's scary. You know, Absolutely. and it takes you way out of your comfort zone. So right. let's talk about this. Like, how? What were the foods that you were eating like before you saw the nutritionist, and like just leading up to all of this? How? What was your diet like? How were you raised? Like, tell me what a, a day in a food day in the life like. of Katie. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I grew up like my parents my dad was in the military and we didn't have a lot of money like a lot of chef boyardee ravioli lunches like campbell's soup all that good stuff like if that's your jam that you eat that up but like once i started realizing what i was eating like that is not my thing mm -hmm. and once i had kids i'm like okay we need to eat healthier what does that look like and for me at the time that looked like things that i now would never eat like a lot of chicken, a lot of meat, but you know, carbs are bad, right? So I wouldn't eat a lot of white potatoes. I do some veggies, but my diet was like meat and sugar. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. deny that like that's what I was eating. Mm -hmm. Um and some pasta, a lot of cheese, a lot of eggs. I was really like my lunch, especially like the first few months of grad school were like a hard boiled egg, some Parmesan cheese, and I'd have some fruits and veggies and a couple of cookies. Okay. So like, this is not helping me get where I need to be, but I didn't know that at the time. Right. Sure. So, sure. um, but I would like cook lasagna and we'd have salad or like okay. chicken breast and a side of some sort. And so not bad, like not, we do not eat McDonald's. If you do that, your thing. It's just something our family doesn't do. Like we just don't go out to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. So I always cook. So I always thought I was eating healthy and doing the right thing. Yeah. But like yeah. cooking things in a pound of butter doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Chicken in a pound of butter is not. Yeah. Healthy. 
Well, I think that you were doing what a lot of people do when they try to eat healthy and try to get their family to eat healthy. And that's like kind of follow the healthy, what, what, what they think is the healthy version of the standard American diet, but it's still the standard American right. diet. <laughs> yes, it is. And people don't understand that. And I had no idea and I didn't get it. And so now that was a huge change for me you know, like to flip from that. And then I have a husband and two kids who are like, do you want me to eat what? You know, yeah, and, so let's talk about that. Like what, what was their reaction when you started eating a whole food plant-based diet? Were they resisting it? Did they embrace it? Do they, what, how do they, like, how's that going? Uh, so I'm the person who said she would never make two meals for her family is like, you eat what I put on the table and that's what you eat. Yeah. No, that's not how it works in my house now. Okay. Um, so I, I batch most weekends. And if I don't, I make a batch of chili and a batch of veggie soup and eat off that if I don't have time to actually batch. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom comes over here often to eat. So she will try my things and sometimes she will decline politely. Um, <laughs> my husband is pretty much on board, but he'll have his feet in both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, my kids, not unless I con them into something or lie to them. <laughs> which I'm not above. Um, I want that. I'm okay with that. Um, so I, like I have it. done that. Too. But I think really for them, and they're eight and 11. So like, that's tough. Like that is. I think that's a tough age anyway. Right? With yes. the whole food thing. Like it doesn't even matter what you're eating. Like it's just a tough age. Right. Food. Yeah. Yes. My child, one child would eat just pasta and tortillas all day long right. and he would be like the happiest kid in the world right mm -hmm. so um like all white flour though so i've tried to modify as i can and he will eat lentil pasta and doesn't know it so mm -hmm. i've tried to do some of those things which has been helpful but i've also had to accept that like i can't force them to change with me especially at this age now had i been whole food plant-based from day one you know it's not an issue because mm -hmm. it's just what we have but that's mm -hmm not how it's working. So for me, just exposure for them. Mm -hmm. uh, like I model how I would like them to eat. And yes, you have this, but why don't you try this? And usually it's a no, but like my youngest last night ate some French fries and a whole bunch of celery and carrots. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take that as a win. Yeah. You know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, you do not eat chicken. And like, I'm actually kind of okay with that. Let's go grab a handful of nuts. You know what I mean? Like just trying to expose them mm -hmm. to other things. And mm -hmm. I now make the waffles and pancakes, whole food plant-based, and they don't realize it. So I just okay. make sure they're not in the kitchen when I do it. So, <laughs> so you're just thinking about, about it, basically. basically. I, I'm sneaky and um, yeah, I'm that. like totally okay with it. Like I just do what I do. So it's hard. But I know it's what I need to do for me, and I know it's what I want for them. But I also get that I can't force it on them. Right now. Yeah, there has Which to be that hard. balance, right? There does, yeah. Yeah. So, how long? When did you start eating whole food plant based? How long? Uh, you let me think. This? Twenty. What year are we in now? Twenty nineteen. I think January of twenty eighteen. So it'll be almost two years. Mm. Yeah. Okay. January 17th of 2018 was my day. To get okay. Right. Yeah. So it'll be two years at next month. <clears throat> so yeah. when you started eating this way, how long did you, did it take for you to see a <clears throat> drop in your A1C? Um, I went after, let me think, January. I probably went in May. So I started in January. I went to May and hit a drop. Mm -hmm. already so I didn't really have time I'm in, I was in school full-time and I live about 30 minutes outside of St. Louis so I was commuting every day anyway so mm -hmm. just to get back for appointments wasn't realistic for me at the time so um in that May though when I went for my doctor appointment I had him check so I'm also that patient who like calls every three months <laughs> like, can I just come in for an A1C check please <laughs> um so yeah and it had dropped significantly he's like what are you doing differently yeah so that was, gonna, that was my next question so like when your numbers dropped and he hadn't put you on the medication was he surprised and did he come to you and he asked what you were doing yeah he does so for him he'll do my a1c in office and then he'll just sit around and chat me up for a while while we wait for the thing to spin um and he's like well what are you doing differently so that's when i got to tell him what i did and he's like really and it's working i'm like 
well, I guess we'll find out from your little machine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, it was good. And so then he actually sent me to have a full blood panel done just to check everything else and everything was great. Everything had dropped, you know, I'm on no meds. So yeah. that has been huge. And I actually had not been exercising nearly as much just because I was kind of burning the candle at both ends. And mm -hmm. um, so like that wasn't really different. So we kind of like, it's the exercise and it's not, I mean, yeah, yeah. I just eat differently. Yeah. 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 So you saw, I mean, and, and that's the thing about this way of eating, right? It's like the, the, this way of eating is not only the, the thing that's really good for, you know, lowering cholesterol and lowering, lowering blood pressure, but also like getting your like sugar in check too. So it's like, right. Like one yes. stop shop and, and probably like releasing some weight and feeling more energetic. So tell me some of the things that you experienced like along with your numbers, you know, getting better, um, that you experienced that like kind of surprised you. <laughs> I think my, um, increase in energy. And so people that know me are like, Oh dear God, Katie, like how many cups of coffee have you had? Cause you need mm -hmm. to stop. And I'm like, I haven't had any since 6 a.m. and it's 3 p.m. And I'm like, woo, I'm loving <laughs> up the world. Um, so I think that was a huge surprise for me. I wasn't in any afternoon slump, like even at a 1 p.m. lecture when most people are slumping. Yeah. Um, I was like, let's go. And I haven't had coffee since 6 a.m. Um, so I think that was one of my biggest, like the huge increase in energy and just not having the bumps in. Um, the slumps that I was having. Mm -hmm. um, I think I sleep better too, although I also realize I'm incredibly busy and probably burning the candle at both ends way too much. But that could have something to do with it. But mm -hmm. I felt like a more restful sleep yeah. um, when I was doing it. And I can think better, which sounds kind of funny, but I'm just mm -hmm. more clear headed and focus easier. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, a huge benefit for graduate school. Yeah, no well. kidding. Yeah. And I hear that so, a lot. Like, yeah. All of these things, like every time I talk to somebody, it's like, it's always like the first thing, like the energy, I'm sleeping soundly and like my mental clarity. Yes. It's, it's like so noticeable, you know? It, it like shockingly, and it's a huge leap too. Like it's, you can't deny it. You're like what is yes. happening to me? I feel great all the time. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's not it's like, supposed to be like this. It's, it's amazing. And, but, but that's the funny thing. Cause like, this is how it's supposed to be. And that's, and we are so like right. asked backwards that people think like, Oh my gosh, this is crazy. And it's like, no, the other way is crazy. Like, like right. the body is meant to work. The body is meant to right. have energy. Like we don't, you know, we haven't always had caffeine. <laughs> right. Right. That you has know? not always been a thing. Right. And so it's like, yes, when you wake up, like waking up and having energy and not being groggy, like that's really what we're meant to do. And it's just like people, right. you know, and, and, and what makes me so sad is that people don't know this. Like a lot of people don't right. know this. And there are people who know this and choose to do the medication anyways. And then fine, like that's fine. But for most people, like they don't know that there's an alternative. And if right. you have somebody who doesn't know, who, who wasn't willing to like you did kind of stand up and say, wait a minute, I don't want to go the medication route. I want to look for an alternative. I want to see what's happening with my body. And then, you know, start doing research. If you aren't one of those people, you're going to take the medication. And then you're not only going to feel crappy from like your food, but you're also going to have side effects from the medication, which is even going to make you feel more crappy. Right. So it's like, it right. It like compounds, you know, and right. Right. when you, you know, I mean, just like what you did, okay, you know, screw the, 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 the diabetes diet advice and the medication and let's like look at this right. instead. It's like now you, you don't have to take the medication. You don't have to feel bad from the medication and you feel so good and other areas in your life are improving. Right. So it's like a no brainer right. once you know. <laughs> Once you know, but if you don't know, you know, you can only do with what you know, right? So, yes. Yeah. Yes. So get me in your, in your mindset because I've never, like, I've always, I've, you know, I've never eaten meat and I've never, ever followed any um, sort of like fad diet or low carb. So can you like tap back into like that mindset? Like, do you remember when you were doing the low carb thing and you were eating, you know, sugar and um, high protein and low carb, like, I, I want to understand where you were at. Like, was it a fear of carbs? Was it that you wanted them, but you just knew that like they were just bad? Like what was, where were yeah. you? I think it was the carbs are bad and they'll spike your blood sugar. 
was yeah. where I was at. Like, that's what I was taught. That's what the nutritionist said. So, um, I mean, I could actually, <laughs> this is disgusting when I think about it now, but I could like throw down a ton of chicken and eat like a butter laden frosted cake. And my numbers would be like, okay, two hours later. And I'm like, I'm living the light. I mean, chicken and a ton of cake with frosting. But yeah. I've <laughs> like nothing that's actually healthy for me. And, you know, I thought chicken was healthy and I'm eating that. But I think that was one of my biggest ones. I finally stepped back and looked like, how did I ever think that eating this huge amount of animal plus this huge chunk of butter frosted loaded cake was a really good solid choice right. for most of my life but he did i'm like what can i do to justify the sweets or i'm not supposed to have carbs so when i am gonna have carbs i'm gonna go big and it's gonna be cake with frosting because i'm totally yeah. a cake with frosting girl so like <laughs> i love it and chocolate and i were like this together okay. so you know that was hard for me too but like white potatoes and white pasta and you hear about all those things you just don't want to eat those they don't have enough nutrients and they'll spike your blood sugar and same with oatmeal and all these things that you aren't supposed to have um so that's where i was at so it made actually thinking back no sense because i was eating a whole lot of chicken and no like suitable healthy carbs yet i was now and down on some cake so when you started then incorporating complex carbohydrates into your diet and and was there were you nervous to do that because you had in your brain that carbs were bad yes Absolutely. And even thinking like, I'm going to have oatmeal, so I need to add protein powder to that. And I'm like, wait a second, uh, like that's not the road right. I'm on. But it, okay. that was my mindset. So yes, I can have oatmeal, but then I sweeten it with banana, but then I need to add protein powder to counteract that. So I'm, and I find myself still some days like that flashes through and I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. I don't, yeah. I don't have to do that. Like that's not the way it works. So that's, that was hard. Um, and then, like, can I have a baked potato? Well, yeah, I can a cake. <laughs> and, like, I had a sweet potato at lunch today. And, like, you know, like, that was really good. And yeah. I can just eat an apple, you know, and that kind of stuff, which I think I had very warped thoughts about that mm. before. So I still find myself when those, no, I can't just go eat a banana because it might, like, spike my blood sugar when really it'll be fine. It's a banana. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like still some warped thoughts in my mm -hmm. mind about what complex carbs and what fruit can do. Mm -hmm. So that's well, been a challenge. You, but yeah, I mean, you've been doing this for two years, and how many years were you doing the other thing? Mm -hmm. You know, right? Exactly, a lot. Yeah, yeah. so many. <laughs> yes, so it takes time because it's it's a total mindset shift. Like it's it's a total paradigm right. shift, really. Is what it is. It's right. completely. Absolutely. It is how you think. How you know how you think about food and your relationship with food. And it, it's like you're you're going, you're embracing something that you were always told was bad. And so there has to be a right. little bit of fear and a little bit of like not trusting it because we build trust, right? right? Like we, we right. have to gain trust, right? And so yes. in in the beginning, like of course you're going to be like nervous about that and. And it makes sense though, because like you had that mindset for so long, you would have those like, you know, crazy flashes of like, oh wait, this is bad. You know, I mean, it's just like right. me and, and like drinking. It's like, I, I have these things. It's like, wait, I don't do that anymore. It's fine. Like you're not going to wake up with right. anymore because you don't drink. Like it right. just, right. Th those neural pathways were set, right? <laughs> so Right, right. They're not like, changing like they should be. Yes. yes. And so yes. you're like unlearning all of this. So when you um, first started then eating a whole food plant-based diet, um, were you checking your numbers? Were you really like hyper aware of what was going on with your body? Like how can you think back to like that first week that you started sort of like where you yes. were at? I was, I was, I took my blood sugar meter with me even to school. So I would check it an hour I figured after you eight. would. <laughs> like charted it oh yeah of course okay. um I did and like did I what oh my god okay like it's true it's not too bad and then I got nervous like is this actually real did I like break my meter like all those <laughs> things like this can't possibly work this well so like what am I doing wrong yeah um but no it was working and so I did track them um for eight weeks and then for the third month um or the month I guess before I went back to my doctor I stopped like I'm just gonna like do it and trust the process and then go to my doctor and 
just be surprised Mm -hmm. and hopefully in a positive way. Um, And I was, which was fantastic. I think that was the lowest my A1C had been. It was 5.4 at that point. Um, And so that's when we were like, what did you do? Um, Now, like it hovers between 5.4 and 5.7. And I know it depends on like stress and like 8,000 other things happening, but it's still in a really, really good range. And he's like, you just keep doing your thing. Um, But I did. I was like that near psychopath like stuck tracking numbers and I'm yeah. in class like sticking my finger and checking it and making a note and uh, yeah, too- yeah. Um, but I did I did do that yeah yeah I kind of figured that you did that and um and but that's good you know and you're kind of like testing you're you but again like it's because you you were doing something that you've been told that what that the thing that you weren't supposed to do and now you were doing it and so of course like I think that that's smart you know to do that just to make sure that it's right. that, that you're you know that you're going to be okay I mean I think that also right. so many people like hear about these things, like they, they just believe anything that they hear. And, you know, if, if they happen to hear about whole food plant-based diet, then Hey, lucky them. But you know, there's a lot of other like crazy stuff out there too, that, <laughs> yes, that, that yeah. all it takes is, you know, one blog post, you know, sponsored by whoever to, 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 you know, scare people yes. and never eat soy again or, or whatever. Um, yes. 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 So it, it, it takes research and it takes, yes. you know, it, and it takes, it does take trusting the process, you know, it really does. Right. And so I just find it, I find it really fascinating because I, I don't have this personal experience, but I hear about it a lot. And mm-hmm. I think it's, it's one of the saddest things to me that as a society, like we, you know, we, f- we fear fruits and veggies. <laughs> right. Like that makes no sense. <laughs> because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Like it's just that common sense. It's like, how how did how did that happen? You know, like, right. like how did we get here? Right? How am I afraid of a banana? But like bacon is okay. What? Like how? Like take the whole car right. thing out of it for a minute and just look at it for right. for what it for that. You know, it's like, like how, right. did, how did we get here? And it's we got here with a lot of. Right. Yeah. And it's like, but the media right. can help and there's mixed messages out there and people are confused right. because there's so much information. So I get it. But it's like, sometimes right. we just have to like rise above all of that and be like, okay, do I want, you know, like an apple or bacon? Like really, like and you could ask right. like any kid, <laughs> you know, like right. what's, what's healthier and the kid will know. So sometimes it's just right. like we're, we're overcomplicating it. So yes. Yes, I think so. Step down from my soapbox now, but (laughs) no. Well, that's so funny because I have friends who go do the keto diet. Well, I could lose a lot more weight. I'm like, stop for a moment, and that's fine. And what you're putting into your body, like you're putting this into your body, and that's what your body then produces. So anyway, I it's fine when people choose that, but I'm like, just stop and think. Like I'm eating fruit and vegetables. I'm like, I have not keeled over. Because yeah. they were like, well, I'm hungry all the time. Like, actually, I'm not because I eat all the time. And, like, I eat when I'm hungry. And yeah, I we eat. eat. Like, and, like as fiber, like, nutrients. And, yeah. Like, and good. <laughs> and it's satisfying. So, yeah. So, hit on that. Like, when you switched over, were, how did things taste to you? Like, did it take your you a minute to have your palate kind of adjust to this way of eating? Because you were yeah. used to... Kind of more fat, sugar, and salt. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then even now, if I like fall into a rut of like cake, even vegan cake from the local bakery because yeah. it's really close to here, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't. It's too sweet now. Yeah. Um, but it did take a while, and then once I would probably after a week or so, like food started tasting really good. Like wow, this apple is pretty amazing. And, like this food I'm cooking that I found on Clean Food Dirty Girl blog <laughs> is spectacular. Like who thought that blue cheese dressing that has no blue cheese in it would taste this good? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. that has been huge for me just because there are so many things that I, they're kind of my go-to. Like I can never live without this. Yeah. That clearly I'm living and thriving without um, the things taste better. And I think more clean. And I don't mean that in like the, fatty clean way that yes. people mean it but like just, yes I feel better and I don't feel full of like fat and it's like it's like you feel like crisp like it's like a crisp yes. fresh feeling almost. Yes. <laughs> yes it is 
what about like any friends, family, colleagues? Like, were they all pretty supportive of this? Like, apart from your your mom and your husband, who we kind of talked about. But what about the rest of the people in your yeah. life? Pretty good. They're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, they're curious. They're very curious. So, um, and I fed into their curiosity and would just like bring samples for people. I'm like, nice. Do you want to try lunch? I'll bring you lunch tomorrow. And so I would bring stuff for people, and they're like wow, I thought this is going to taste like crap. It's really good. See, I told you, and it's incredibly healthy for you. So people were curious. So instead of like taking any of like the, you don't eat meat, how dare you? What are you? Like my family, my dad's family was from Iowa. So like mm. they eat meat and potatoes, mm -hmm. right? So um, I struggled with that a little bit too. Like, well, then what do you eat? And well, <laughs> All these things I brought with me that you are welcome to try. Yes. Um, and people realize like, oh, like this can actually be good. Um, and it's healthy. And Katie is not dead just because she's not eating cows and chicken. So yeah. I mean, I think that was harder, especially for extended family. Like they just didn't understand like what I could eat because for them, like it's yeah. me, you eat cow and chicken and corn and beans and potatoes yeah. without knowing all these other things that you can eat. So I think just really education and just not being pushy at all. Like, this is what I found that works for me because it's helped my blood sugars and all my numbers regulate and I feel great. And so I, it's not for you. I get it, but would you yeah. like to try some? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try it. That, no, that's good. That's the exact yes. same approach that I take too. But you're right. When people are, you know, when their diet is made up of like chicken and, you know, fish and cows and pigs and um, just the really like corn and potatoes, it's like that's what they're eating for every meal. So when would they have right. time to even explore something else? Because what they're eating is already set. So right. I like it. It makes sense right. that people would think, well, what then do you eat? If you're not eating what I'm eating every day, what else is there? You know, no, like, right. Like the, we don't understand life outside of our norm. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. And so, and I just yes. realized, like, I just, cause I take it for granted that like, this is what I do. And, but I, but I realized that somebody stumbling upon this blog post might have no idea what you eat, what kind of foods you eat. So why don't you just riff on like some foods that you eat and what a typical day in food looks like for you <laughs> Yeah. Um, so in the summer I'll do a green smoothie, but when it's cold out, I just can't do it. Like I've tried, just can't do it. So I'll have, um, like oatmeal with flax and chia and some turmeric and cinnamon. And then I mash up a ripe banana. I like, I'll eat that. Um, actually I ate that pretty much for two and a half solid years for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Um, but like today I had vegetable soup and a piece of sprouted green toast you know with some peanut butter on it uh -huh. um so i do that and then i batch so really i eat that what i batch for lunch and for dinner mm -hmm. um and let me think some easy go-tos though it's been hard because i've been in school and then the last almost six months i've been in clinical so when i just am so busy and i just need food to eat during the week i'll bake up a batch of sweet potatoes and i'll make some um chili which by the way, I did have one favorite chili recipe, but since the Halloween week, that is all I make is your chili from the Halloween. Oh, so nice. So I have that new Nice. Recipe. That's your go-to. It's, it's totally my go-to. Um, so I have that and then the veggie soup and then bake sweet potatoes a lot. I make energy balls that I keep in the fridge so I can grab those. My kids love those and they have no idea that they're actually healthy. So I love that. What do you um, put in them? What are in those? those? Uh, so peanut butter, agave a little bit of maple syrup, a dash of salt, oats, some oat bran, flax, and then a couple of tablespoons of, if you enjoy life, mini chocolate chips. Nice. Toffee cream, happy. Um, but like soup it, you like mix that up, balls, done. Um, and those are a huge hit with people. So I do that a lot. I also do a lot of jackfruit. I love the jackfruit barbecue. Mm -hmm. So we eat that a lot at our house. Um, a lot of pasta sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. just lentil pasta with a basic marinara sauce. Mm -hmm. um, only because, like, I need something, like, super fast sometimes. And yeah. I hate not batching, but, like, reality is, like... You can't always do it. When I, yeah. Like, I can't always do it. So those are kind of my go-tos. The way I did describe it to people is, like, okay, veggies, fruits, whole grains, beans and legumes, and nuts and seeds. Like, if it's in that category, yeah, like, go eat it. Like eat it. I will actually, I will like steam broccoli mm -hmm. and throw some black beans on top 
with some soy sauce. Boom. Totally. Breakfast, yeah. lunch, or dinner. I eat it for whatever I need to. So I keep a lot of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just ready to go. And like a lot of lentil taco meat, I yep. freeze and keep. So I have that ready to go on Taco Tuesday night. Like just that kind of stuff. I like to just always have mm-hmm. stuff available. Mm-hmm. Um, is, this, is this way of eating, is it easier than you thought it was going to be? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Which is interesting because, you know, like the meat and potatoes people are like, how much easier can you get than meat and potatoes? Um yeah. Which is true to some extent, but when I batch, I love it. But really, like, I almost feel like I have more options now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because, like, I never knew that you could put plants together in such cool ways. Exactly. Um, so, like, being it's a cashew cream for stuff and, like, that ranch dressing, man, I can, like, throw that down everything and just, you know, mow it down. Yeah. It's so, like you have a sauce. Like, if you have a sauce in your fridge and you have some veggies – you know, and you have even like a can of beans and you like cooked up some rice. Like I could make, you know, 10 meals. Right. Yes. I think people don't understand that. So I will do that. I will Instapot a huge batch of rice and or quinoa. I'll do something and then just freeze small amounts. And then I always have food. Yeah. Because I always have sauce going to. So it's a lot easier, I think, and faster than what I ever imagined it to be. Even if the weeks I don't batch and I come home, I'm like, oh, I ate the last of chili. What am I going to eat? Well, I always have canned beans. I always have yep. frozen veggies I can saute and I always have some kind of grain. Yeah. And then I eat apples every day too. Like, so I do. I love apples. They're um, like my favorite it's easier. I think. Yeah. yeah. I do too. I have one every day with lunch. Yeah. So, yeah. So see, and any know. excuse to eat avocado. Yeah, I eat avocado a lot. <laughs> avocado is good. Yep. I mean, that's the thing. Like, there's so many different types of plant foods out there, and the combinations that you right. can make from them are endless. And I always talk about that, but I think it's 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 not limited. I mean, the amount yeah. of flavors and textures, and um, it's and I think that once people get over that initial kind of fear of like, is this going to be okay for my blood sugar? Like, you know then they can kind of like, okay, they built that trust and then they can start having fun with it because it's fun yes. to play with food, right? And it play is. around and, and be it able to is. eat all of this amazing food. Because really like right. low, low carb, like the, the the regular standard protocol for, you know, for diabetes is like pretty, like that's pretty limited. It is really right? limited and really strict and like not too many nuts and not too many of this. And I'm like, you're like, killing me people yeah. like those are like the good foods so i look at the standard diabetes protocol and i'm like what i wish people could know and then one of my clinical rounds was an inpatient rehab in a hospital and so looking at people's orders and what they were having and what was considered healthy for the cardiac yeah. diet i'm like my gosh and thinking if i were in this hospital for anything i could eat oatmeal there's so much room for change in that area. Right. Um, and, but it's going to take, you know, it's not going to come from the hospitals and it's not going to come from the government. It's going to come right. from demand. And right now it right. is changing and there is like this wave right. of plant-based people and more and more doctors are like your doctor are hearing from their patients like, Hey, I'm doing this and it's working. And we're almost like right. schooling the doctors. So I think right. it's going to be a little bit reverse, but you know, it's, it, it is happening. And, you know, that's why I wanted to talk to you and put this on the blog, just so that people know that, Hey, there's an alternative. Like if your doctor is, right. th- is re- requesting that you go on metformin or any other like medication for prediabetes or diabetes, like there's something else to consider. And so right, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for You're talking welcome. with me and for sharing your experience and a little bit of your life to hopefully help other people. And even if they, you know, like our meal plans are awesome and I love them and like a lot of people do, but even if people don't get our meal plans, go find something else, whole food plant based, like right. something, anything, eat, eat the plants, <laughs> eat all the plants, eat all, all the plants, you have to do is eat the plants. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I'm so like thrilled for you that you, that you found this way of eating and that you have been able to have such awesome results with it and then just kick ass with your life because you're busy. You can use all the energy that you can get with kids and your yes. school and everything else. So, um, I, you know, fucking good job. Good job. Well done. Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you. Cause you're such like inspiration for me. So 
I love everything that you put out, which has been huge for me too. I'm like, okay, I need some good Molly inspiration. <laughs> what does she have for me today? <laughs> Bring it on. You and Lindsay, man, you're like, keep me going. Yeah. Well, so yeah, so, so happy to do it and uh, really stoked to have you in our community. And again, thank you for coming on here, especially during the holidays. And um, I sure have a really awesome rest of your day and just thank you again and keep up the awesome work. Great. Thank you so okay. much. Bye. Bye.